Hey everyone, we're working on a podcast about how tough it is to buy a car right now. From dealers charging thousands over sticker price to used cars selling close, if not over, the price people paid for them brand new. It's a wild time to be car shopping and we'd love to hear from you. Text or email a video to talkingcars at iCloud.com and tell us about your experience about buying a new or used car recently. That's talkingcars at iCloud.com. Thanks and on with the show. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Talking Cars. I'm Jennifer Stockberger. I'm Ryan Pizlikowski. And I'm Mike Monticello. So this week, we're going to jump right in talking about the 2022 Toyota Tundra pickup. And if you're thinking to yourself, self, it's been a long time since I've heard about a redesigned Toyota Tundra Tundra pickup, you may be right. Because the truth is, it's been about 15 years since Toyota has made a significant redesign of the Tundra. And we rented um, a pre- pre-production, if you will, Tundra from Toyota. And I want to talk to you guys about your impressions. So we're going to start with you, Monty. What did you think of the fancy schmancy new Toyota Tundra? Yeah. So, I mean, you're right. We, uh, the Tundra's all new, finally. Uh, it was getting <laughs> a little long in the tooth maybe uh, a while ago. Uh, Classic but, Toyota. Yeah. But, you know, uh, it was dead set reliable. But they knew they needed to make this change. And I mean, just so many things needed to be updated as far as uh, powertrain and infotainment and things like that and um, and rear suspension. And they did. Uh, so um, I think it's a great new truck. Uh, keep in mind, we rented the 1794 version, uh, which has the name 1794 has to do something with the year that the land that they're on became a ranch or something like that. Um because Texas. it's Texas built, yeah, right. Which it's is kind Texas of cool. built, so that's where this 1794 edition that we rented comes from. But which it's is the, the top, top trip, top yeah. shelf, yeah. So our impressions are based on this. We're buying an SR5, uh, and and uh, we that's just got it. We'll... Oh, we did. Came in oh, okay, yes- came in yesterday. I saw it. Yes. So all new truck, um, new powertrain. Uh, it's a twin turbocharged V6 with a 10 speed automatic, 389 horsepower is what the regular one has. There's going to be a hybrid as well, twin turbo V6 with even more power, kind of along the lines of the Ford Power Boost hybrid. It's not really about fuel economy so much as it is about giving the truck even more capability. Um, So uh, I believe we're going to get a hybrid as well. We'll definitely rent one for sure. We might even buy one. But so- Yeah, Gabe says we're going to get both. Okay. So, um, and then the other big news with this is they switched to uh, a multi-link rear suspension with coil springs. And that's, you know, similar to, that's what Ram did with the 1500 years ago. Uh, And, but while most uh, full-size pickups still have leaf springs at the rear, which is kind of an old school way of doing it. Uh, Great for hauling and towing, but not so great for ride quality. So they made a lot of big changes. And I I think, like I said, Jen, I really like it uh, only based on that top shelf model. So we'll see how things right. trickle down to, to ours, but the powertrain doesn't change. Right. And it's a great powertrain. I mean, has really good power. Um, the 10 speed automatic. I mean, we sometimes use the term shifts imperceptibly. Yes. This thing upshifts imperceptibly, yeah. really, really nice. And it, you know, downshifts appropriately. Uh, and also, so it's a twin turbo V6, right. And, you know, trucks, we're used to full size trucks being V8s. And I think a lot of people want that V8. Well, they gave, gave it a really nice, like growly sound when you're on the throttle. So, which I think is in contrast to say what what Ram does with its 1500, which is it's pretty like throaty all the time, uh, which can be a little in your face. Ford, their twin turbo V6s, because they really started this twin turbo V6 thing with the full size pickups, right? The right. 2.7 and the 3.5, mm-hmm. they don't sound all that awesome. This one has this, I think, cool, meaty growl. You know, I think that's really cool. I also just want to say Ford proved that full-size pickup buyers are absolutely fine with twin turbo V6s, right? Instead of V8s, because that, the 2.7, the, the engine that your your husband Jack has in his yep. F-150 gen, yep. that is the most popular configuration for the F-150 right now. So yeah, one interesting thing about this truck though, the powertrain, is that 
you know, you know, these engine stop start systems that are designed to to save fuel. You know, you come to a stoplight and once you come to a stop, the engine turns off. It saves fuel. Usually when you let off some brake pressure uh, or hit the gas pedal, the engine turns back on. Right. This truck gives you a display in the instrument cluster that says if you press the brake down harder, it will activate the engine stop start system, which is interesting. It's a little weird. I, I got to be honest. I don't want to sound like a wimp, uh, but I I don't really want to hit the brake pedal, put the brake pedal down any harder while I'm stopped. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like, and I know you guys are going to say wimpy things about me. No, what I was <laughs> going to say is, you know, we've seen a lot of implementations of stop start, some great, some not so great. If people don't want that, I really like the idea of- I agree. It gives you the option. Yes. I'm not going to engage it unless you tell me to. And you don't have to hit any buttons. That's the nice thing. Because right with stop start, my girlfriend's Volvo- she constantly forgets. She has to, on her XC60, has to hit that little green button or the thing turns off. And it's a bit of an you know intrusive stop-start system, right? So she's always turning that button and uh, because we both forget sometimes in it. And with this one, I like it. It gives you the option. Like I said, right. I, I, I typically don't like them because I, I'm, I run hot. I'm, you know, uh, so I, I like the AC on all the time. And sometimes the stop-start systems they turn the AC down or shut it off. And so uh, I honestly didn't uh, press it uh, harder to have the, the the engine turn off. I know. And honestly, they but don't a save choice. a ton of fuel anyway. You have, no, I do, I agree. Totally agree. I, I honestly, I was kind of like, well, I don't want to press the brake down any harder. Yeah. And you talked about, you know, f- that Ford had dropped the V8, you know, everybody's the twin turbo six, Jack's the t- twin turbo six, but you know, Toyota, We've always said their reliability, part of it comes from them cautiously implementing. And maybe they were just waiting, you know, the 15 years to see how it, impl- how it, how it hit the market for Ford before they made the changes too. Yeah, they're, they're, so, <laughs> they, they have the luxury of watching everybody right. try it out before them. Right. And, yeah. and Monty, you talked about the suspension changes, you know, from the Leafs to uh, the coil. But Ryan, anything on ride and handling for the truck? Yeah, so um, you know when when we first saw the information about the suspension and whatnot, you know the the multi link in the rear with coil springs is um, very similar to the the Dodge Ram, which is probably the best riding fifteen hundred series half ton truck we've ever tested. Uh, still holds that uh, trophy to this day. Um, this truck does not ride like that. This truck has a a firm has a firm edge to it. It feels like a truck, and I don't have a problem with that. But um, I wouldn't go into it thinking this is going to be this is a, a Ram ride competitor. It's not. It's just not there. And then handling, I, to be honest, it felt more like an F one fifty than a say a Silverado for me. So I, I've always held the Silverado a little bit higher um, than the other two, just because of the steering a little quicker, a little more um, informative. This is a little more bland. It's not bad by any means. This is a, a, a big truck. It does uh, the, the truck things that you want it to do. I just, I, I guess, I wouldn't. I didn't, I didn't get overly excited by the, uh, you know, by the handling or the, um, the ride. It didn't stick out to me like, wow, they really um, did something special here. The powertrain, um, what Mike, you know, Monty was talking about earlier, the powertrain is absolutely fantastic. I mean, the, the, the power delivery is just that's what sticks out to me. And you think about it, they're all big trucks. The expectation isn't that they're going to ride or handle particularly right. great, but yeah, absolutely. I, like yeah. you say, there's levels for sure. Yeah, and the one interesting thing about it is that. So the 1794 we rented uh, was equipped with the optional advanced package, which brings adaptive shock absorbers and load leveling rear air suspension. Right. So right. I personally am going to hold out my... Exactly. Uh, sometimes these air suspensions do, you know, believe it or not, be, uh, don't always react the same. So I think it's possible that our truck might actually ride a little better. Uh, it is possible. It could. It could. It, it could also go the other way. I mean, we've seen that with the Tahoe and the Suburban. I mean, they're different wheelbases, but our Tahoe doesn't have the air suspension. Uh, the Suburban has that Magna Ride suspension, and it rides quite a bit nicer. Uh, right. But we've seen that even in the shorter wheelbase Tahoe in the past. So yeah, so it's, it's exciting. I mean, it, like, like Jen was saying, it's been fifteen years. You said I think fifteen yeah, years. So- I mean, that's classic Toyota. They take their sweet time. But in all that time, there's beautifully reliable vehicles that are easy to jump in go. They're not overcomplicated. This thing has a huge infotainment screen in it that's like super easy to use. Nice big buttons. I thought that was fantastic. Um, The interior was quite nice. Again, this was a top trim. So it was... uh, One of the things I was looking for is, you know, we've talked about these cool amenities like uh, that 
pickup trucks are adding, be it the trunk in the bed or the configurable um, drop-down gear selector and office configuration in the F-150 or whatever. I didn't see a lot of that in this interior compartment. Yes, it's got storage under the rear seats. One cool option, I thought this was cool, is what they're calling um, the, uh, the backup system there backup guide system with straight path assist. So I joke because my son Griffin says, mom, backing up a trailer is a life skill. So this literally lets you set the path of where you want to put your boat or your horse trailer or your camper and you run the gas and it does the steering automatically. I'm like, oh, there's a life skill package for you right there. For people who don't do it often, yeah. It is a skill you can is. lose. Yeah. And say I want to, and we've talked about this, you know, Griffin does all these horse shows. I do want to be able to rent a little camper, but it scares scares me because I'm not very good at it because I never do it. So I would love something like that. It's something that you you do. Um, yes. It's a skill that you, you hone in over time. Um, when we had the, the Ford, Ford has a, a similar type of a system um, that's available on the F-150s. Um, and I, I tried it out a few years back and it confused the heck out of me. Yeah. I, I I couldn't use it because I'm right. so used to just being. Yeah, I can back up. I can back up looking in the mirrors yeah. or looking over my shoulder. This system was kind of crazy. But if you don't ever use that, if you're not, you don't ever back up or you don't do it that often, learning that is probably the way to do it, right? So this that's neat that they offer this. And I mean, they must be they must see data that says people want this kind of uh, technology. So. Like it's me. It's interesting. Like me. <laughs> and and you, Ryan, you hit on it. The 15 years has given the Tundra fabulous reliability. But, you know, you look at sales numbers. I was looking them up. F-150s outsold Tundras in 2021 by like six times. Silverado or nine yeah. times. Silverados by almost six times. So the Tundra maybe can pull back a little some of those numbers. So, That's yeah. a tough, tough category to yeah. um, – be good in, or you know, to see it, and just with those, those the, the big three, right? You know? And I'd be remiss. Safety Sense Toyota Safety Sense two point five, the next version of Toyota Safety Sense, standard on all trim levels of the Toyota Tundra coming in twenty twenty two. So yeah, so of course you know, and I will confirm. Gabe says we we obviously just got the SR five. We will be buying the hybrid, which we didn't talk, but that's another big change for this platform is is the addition of a hybrid powertrain. So stay tuned for our full tests of the twenty twenty two Toyota. Tundra. So moving on to your question of the week, um, always keep them coming, talkingcars at iCloud.com, a video like we have this week, a written uh, email, talkingcars at iCloud.com. This week is from Daniel, who we've heard from before. Welcome back, Daniel. A question about all-wheel drive. Take a listen. This is my dad's 2010 Subaru Outback, and one of the things he's absolutely loved about it is its performance in the snow. He would like something more efficient for his next car, but unfortunately there's no such thing as an Outback or Forester Hybrid. So he's been looking at the CRV Hybrid, RAV4 Hybrid, Ford Edge Hybrid, Hyundai Tucson Hybrid, and the upcoming Kia Sportage Hybrid. But he's worried that the all-wheel drive systems do not compare to Subaru's all-wheel drive. Do you have any data suggesting which companies would perform equally well in the snow as Subaru? Thanks. So, yeah, Daniel, I, so I, before I throw this to, um, you know, Daniel's question about all-wheel drive systems and Subaru versus others, I can tell a story. I had a Subaru Impreza. Um, I'm talking 98. I think it was a 97 or 98. And at the time, I was working for Pirelli Tire, so I had Tyrell, Pirelli winter 210s or something on it. And we got a boatload of snow. And I was going up a very long driveway before it was plowed. That little Impreza split the snow like it was. You ever see the trains that yeah. go through? On the, it, the snow was coming up over the hood. And that little Impreza just went up through like almost like three feet of snow like it was nothing. So I can attest to that Subaru all-wheel drive. But it's a very good question from Daniel as we move to more electronic all-wheel drive systems. So Ryan, what what do you got for Daniel? So we we actually years ago we did a um, kind of an evaluation. We took a, a bunch of um, different all-wheel drive SUVs, popular SUVs. You know, a, 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 what it was a Toyota Rav Four, a Honda CRV, a Subaru Forester, and we we got some snow at the track, and we got to blast around the track and try different uh, cornering scenarios, uh, accelerating, and you know, to see just how these uh, vehicles 
did in the snow. What we learned was they're not all created equally, right? And these are these were regular gasoline vehicles, no hybrids or anything, right? So flash forward to today, we have a lot of hybrids. Hybrids are set up differently, um, especially all, all our all wheel drive hybrids. A lot some some of these vehicles actually are more front wheel drive based, and the electric part is the rear axle. Um, and some of these early hybrids, like I remember back in the day, the the when the Highlander hybrid first came out excellent vehicle, but there was actually some issues with uh, driving around in the snow. They, they didn't quite perfect it. T- t- today, I'm sure we haven't tested it, but I'm sure it's, it's much better than it was. Um, you know, they, they catch up with these things to the point they're not all created equally. So um, you take something like maybe like the Crosstrek hybrid. Now there's a car that has Subaru's symmetrical all wheel drive system. All the hybrid stuff is p- before that. So all the power is getting put into that hybrid or into that all wheel drive system. So you're still getting a uh, per true all wheel drive uh, vehicle it's with a hybrid before that. It's one of those things it's it's they're not all created equally. So it's something you got to investigate for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, you just mentioned symmetrical all wheel drive and symmetrical all wheel. First of all, the Subaru is one of the few systems uh all few all wheel drive systems that is a mechanical all wheel drive system. Uh and it, they Correct. call it symmetrical all wheel drive. Symmetrical what they what they mean is the power is constantly going to all four wheels. Now that's different as Ryan was talking about these front wheel drive based setups where they want to be in front wheel drive for fuel economy and things like that. So they're having to react, you know, uh, like slip and then grip is what you might call it, right? The Subaru system uh, and props to your dad, Daniel, for being in tune with his car, feeling that the way that the the Subaru was working, we noticed that same thing in that test Ryan's talking about where you could sense uh, it it drove like an all wheel drive vehicle, meaning it reacted the way you wanted it to, to get you through the turn. Uh, Whereas the CRV and the RAV4, they had more of a tendency to to spin the front tires and push toward the outside of the turn, right? Now that's, Mm. I think the key thing is these all wheel drive uh, hybrids are still going to get you to do what you need them to do. You get up your steep driveway in the snow, uh, get up a steep hill or get through some deep snow, right? That They're going to do that. But your dad is probably going to notice a difference in the way these work compared to his Subaru just because this, the Subaru system, look, it's like what? Bo knows football, Bo knows uh, baseball, right? That Bo Jackson commercial from the right. 80s. Subaru knows, <laughs> I'm dating myself, wheel Subaru <laughs> knows all-wheel drive. This is every vehicle they sell in the U.S. comes only with all-wheel drive other than the BRZ sports car, which is rear-wheel drive. So this company knows all-wheel drive. And so props to your dad for noticing that. You're going to, the, these other ones are going to work okay, They're, you, but uh, someone who's really in tune with their system uh, might notice that they just, Put the power down a little differently. And speaking of that cross track, because we should talk about that real quick. This cross track plug in hybrid, it's cool that they did it. We didn't love it though. Uh, it's neat that it's still a mechanical all wheel drive system, but we're talking about it's like a 17 miles of electric range, which mm-hmm. is very on the low side for a plug in hybrid. You lose a fair amount of cargo room versus the regular cross track. Um, it, when it's acting as a hybrid instead of, you know, not just on its, it's, uh, you know, it's electric stuff has, has been depleted and now it's acting as a true hybrid. It only gets about four MPG better overall than the regular cross track. Whereas most hybrids get, you know, more like 10 to 15 miles per gallon better than the regular model. So, and then when you add in the price premium, it just does, doesn't make a lot of sense. Plus maybe it's too small for your dad. We just wanted to bring that up because it's interesting that Subaru stayed with the mechanical all wheel drive with that but it's just uh, just uh as far as value it just it just doesn't do it i just wanted to add on the positive side of the electronic systems is that because you can that electric motor only engages when slip or whatever you don't have those frictional losses of an all wheel drive system that you live with the other 9 months of the year perhaps right. when you don't necessarily need it exactly. so if you're buying a hybrid and you're looking to optimize fuel economy that's a benefit of the electronic system. You know, Subaru has never been top of their game in fuel economy because of those all-wheel drive losses. The other cool thing I thought, you know, in reading and doing our homework is the programmability. Like it was saying that they can program the rear, you know, the engagement of the all-wheel drive to limit off-the-line front-wheel drive, front-wheel slip. They can program the all-wheel drive to come in in a corner, to your guy's point, to minimize understeer. They can program it, you know, 
in a way that you can't do with a mechanical they, wall. Yeah, they can system. program it so that the, you know, if you want to have it feel more rear drive based, you can right. have right. like say 70% rear, 30% front. You're right. With the electronic all wheel drive, there's a lot of things they can do. And I just want to make it clear. They're going to work for you. They're going to get you in through those snowy situations, but you, it, it won't feel the same. Some of these, especially just the regular small SUVs that aren't designed for performance, your dad, Daniel, might feel some differences, but it's still going to work. It's still absolutely going to work. This is all assuming you have good tires. Oh, oh here we go with the tires. <laughs> all right. Tires, tires, tires. <laughs> <laughs> now, for real, I mean, if you're dealing with a lot of snow, you should definitely look at some um, winter tires or even all weather tires, because uh, the only thing touching the road under your car is four pieces of rubber. So pay yeah. attention. And not it could only be that, like my Impreza. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. just because your all season tires can get you going doesn't with the all wheel drive doesn't mean they're gonna Correct. let you stop anywhere near as well. So yeah. So thank you, Daniel. Great question. Obviously, a lot to talk about there. As always, keep all of your questions coming, talkingcars at iCloud.com. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Ryan. And we'll see you next time.